Hey guys, hope you're having a good day. This is Pastor Doug. I'm going to be telling you a story. Uh, I like to tell stories. I don't always have an audience. And so I thought I'd take this as an opportunity to uh, speak to you. Uh, I like to tell jack tales. I learned them when I was in East Tennessee. Uh, we had a guy that came to our church, Donald Davis, who grew up in a traditional storytelling family. And uh, he shared a lot of jack tales, taught us how to communicate our faith through sharing stories. Uh, and this is one that I love to tell. Uh, it's probably the first one, if you've never heard of Jack Tales, called Hardy Hardhead. Uh, it begins with uh, the story uh, in uh, a way that you may not have heard before. And so I just want you to, to imagine just for a minute that you lived way out in the woods. And, and the trees were around you and there was a cabin and that was your house. And that's the kind of house that Jack lived in. Now Jack didn't live there by himself. He was just a little old boy and he had his older brother's uh, Will, who's a little bigger than him, and Tom, his oldest brother, and there there was a mom, and their mom took care of them, and she was the best woman there was. And But being out in the woods, well, they weren't connected to anything, and so uh, they were definitely isolated from everyone around, And uh, but they had to take care of things. Now, Tom, being the oldest and the strongest, while well, he worked out in the fields, uh, he plowed, uh, he did all the things that took a little extra muscle and stuff like that. And then there was Will. Uh, Will was still a, a little stronger, uh, but he had to take care of the things in the barn. So he'd take care of the chickens and the cows and the goats, and uh, he had to milk all the things and bring stuff in. And, uh, and so he had to, to slop the hogs. He had to do all that kind of stuff, and that was hard work. And little old Jack, why, why he had to work around the house. And I don't know if you like doing chores around the house or not, if you're asked to do chores, but his chores were a little different. You see, they didn't have anything but wood to create a fire for them to cook on or to be warmed with. And so part of the house chores was chopping wood and bring it in. Uh, they didn't have running water, so part of his chores was to go down to the creek and bring up all kinds of good water for themselves and, and take out the old water. And he had to do that. He had to work in the garden that was around there. He had to take out the ashes from the fire. Uh, he just had all kinds of things around the house that he had to do. But of all the chores that Jack had to do, the one he loved the most was to go into town. You see, ever so often they had to get some supplies, and so uh, his mama would send him into town, and when he got there, man, he loved it. Why, he would go to uh, Mr. Hemphill's store, and, and he got there, and he loved it, not because of all the toys that had arrived from the East, because they couldn't afford that kind of thing, uh, and it wasn't because he could get anything extra. He just had a little bit of money, so buying some dried beans and some cornmeal, a little flour, and he'd have to trudge it all back out to home. But what he loved was Mr. Thompson. Why, he, Mr. Webster would be sitting right there on the front porch, and he'd always be rocking in his chair and be listening to the things that were going on. And uh, he always knew everything that was happening. And so as he got there, why, uh, Jack would always check in with Mr. Webster and say, hey, what's happening? What? And he would always want to hear a story of something that's going on. And when Jack got there this particular day, Mr. Webster called him over and said, hey, Jack, come here. I, I, you're not going to believe what, what's going on. And Jack got all wide-eyed, and he was saying, what do you mean? What's going on? Tell me about it. He said, well, you know, you know the king. He said, oh, of course, everybody knows the king. Now, not a real king living in the mountains and the Appalachians, but he was the guy who had all the money in the big house, might as well have been a king. And since most of them had come over from England, they just referred to him as the king. And so uh, they said, you know the king, and he's got that beautiful daughter. And Jack said, oh, yeah, I know that beautiful daughter. Everybody knows about her. He says, well, she's gone. She's missing. Everybody's looking for her everywhere. Nobody can find her. And the king is so distraught about it. Well, why, he's going to give a reward to anybody who could find her. Why, Jack knew right then and there fortune had come his way. And he decided that he was going to have to figure out where that girl was. Why, everybody was looking everywhere, and, and Jack just knew that the best thing he could do was start from the beginning. So he got permission from the king to go into his house, go on up to the third floor, go right in there with the, his daughter stayed, and he just started rummaging around in the room, seeing if there was any clues, and patting down the bed. And as he got up to the pillow, he noticed that there was a little piece of paper underneath it. It was all crumpled up a little bit, and when he pulled it out, 
he opened it up and he noticed that there was this crinkly old handwriting on it. And it said, all you got to do is do what I do. And it was signed, The Witch. Why, Jack took that right down to the king and showed it to him. And the king couldn't believe it. The witch had stolen his daughter, and, and she was making a demand, saying if there's anybody could do what she could do, that's the only way he was going to get his daughter back. And so, well, the king put out a challenge. He said if there is anyone anywhere who could go to the witch's house and do what the witch could do, why, why they'd get to be the next king. Why, he'd give them half of the gold in his kingdom. He just would be willing to do anything to get his daughter back because he loved her that much. Why, Jack couldn't believe his good fortune, and so he went on into Mr. Hemphill's store. He, he got all the supplies. He told Mr. Webster, thank you, and he went on up his way and got back. And that night, by the crackle of the fire, he told this tale to his brothers and his mom. And, and, and while, while Tom started a thinking to himself, being older and stronger and, and being able to, to do things that are, anybody could do, he'd been building those muscles out there, plowing in that field and turning over those rocks while he was a, a pretty good brood of a boy. And so uh, he just knew that he could do anything a little old witch could do. And uh, so he got up early the next morning, but his mama, being the good woman she was, got up even earlier. Why, she got up and had gone out to the cows and gotten some milk. She put it in a jar, got it down the creek, got it good and cold. Uh, she'd made some sweet bread, and she put it in a little poke, you know, a little sack, uh, so that uh, Tom could carry it on his way. And sure enough, uh, he was just taking off and going along the way, and uh, he was just thinking to himself uh, all the things that a witch might do and how he could do it better. You know how a guy gets in his head about things like that. He just couldn't imagine anything that the witch could do that he couldn't do. And he was about halfway there, going down through the creek and up through the hollow and around over the ridge and up over the horizon and back down into the next canyon and coming back through the valley. And as he was making his way to the witch's house, he kind of got time when he was ready to eat. And he noticed an old log. Why, he, he pulled up that old log to sit on and he just found himself a, a place to get ready to eat his good things. about to put his hand in his sack. When all of a sudden, this man come up out of the woods. Why, it was a, a pretty short little old guy. He had this long blue beard, went right down to the ground and curled right up before it touched. It looked like a little troll or something like that coming right up there at Tom. And Tom's eyes got big and he, he didn't know what to do. He was just sitting there uh, almost afraid to death. And that old man just came up and said, oh, oh, Tom, you, you don't have anything that you might share with me, do you? Why, well, I'm an old man, and I hadn't had nothing to eat now for about about a day, and I'm getting mighty sort of hungry, and, and I was just wondering if, if you might have something in that poke you might share with me. Why, well, Jack just thought about it. He said, oh, I'd like to share with you. I would, but my, my mama just packed enough for me, and, and I'm going to go do what the witch would do, and I, I, I'm going to need to keep up my strength, and, and i got to be able to get the king's daughter, and I'd, I'd like to share with you. I really would, but, but you see, I, uh, I just got enough for myself, and, and you understand, don't you, sir? And that old man said, yeah, I understand, Tom. I, I certainly do understand, and he just went on his way. Why, Tom, he pulled out that sweet bread and ate it up, and it was fortified, and he was feeling strong, and he drank that sweet milk, and it made him feel even full of, of energy, and, and he just made his way on the rest of the way down to the, the witch's house. Now, when he got there, sure enough, there was a long line of fellows leading right up to the cabin. They was all getting there and taking their turns. It was a pretty might of a line, and so Tom just had to stand around and wait and wait and wait. And as he was waiting, a fellow would go inside the, the witch's house, and then after a while, he'd come flying out the side door. Why, when he did, the king's men would catch him and bound up their heads and send them on their way. Closer that line got to Tom, he was getting mighty fearful. He wasn't so sure about what was happening and, and wasn't entirely sure he could do what the witch could do, but, but he was determined, and, and so he just knew he was going to be able to do it. 
why he got up there and he was about to knock on the door and it opened all by itself. He stepped on through and it slammed right behind him and it was so dark inside but there was a little sliver of light that came down on the ugliest old wart, on the ugliest old nose, on the ugliest old woman he ever did see. And she was pointing her crooked, ugly little old finger right up at Tom and saying, all you got to do is do what I do. And he was wondering what that was. Why, she pulled out a little bit of a stool. She stood up on top of it. She jumped up, turned three flips in the air, come down on a hackle and bounced off. Now, I can tell you probably might not know what a hackle is. Now, a hackle is a piece of wood. It's got like nails sticking up through it. You use a couple of them to, to take wool off of a sheet and bring them back and forth so that you can take that to the spinning wheel and make you some yarn so you can make you some clothes. Why, she landed on one of those hackles and just bounced right off of it. Well, Tom was there, so he's going to give it a try. And he got up there, he got up on that old chair, he jumped up, turned two flips, come right down that hackle, and stuck. Why, that old witch just reached over, put her feet on either side of the hackle, and Tom's head rocked him back and forth, pulled him up, and throwed him out the door. Whenever he was out the door, got caught, had his head bound up, and it sent him on home. Well, needless to say, late that night, by the crackle of the fire, Tom told his tale, and the wheels in Will's head began to turn like sometime they do, and he got to thinking how his mama had been calling him a hard head for a long time, and uh, he knew that he could probably do something like his brother was describing. And so when he went out to do his chores that day in the barn, why well, he got to practicing. He got him a little stump, and he was jumping off of it and turning flips. Got where he could turn two and three, sometimes four. And he'd come right down, and he'd hit rocks. Didn't have no hackle at their house, but he put a hole down there, and, and he could hit it some of the time. And it didn't scar him up too much. He was pretty hard-headed. And then uh, he got himself ready. And so he told his mama the next day he's getting up mighty early. Going to make it to that witch's house, do what the witch could do, get that girl and get her back home. Miss Mama, being the good woman she was, why she went ahead and, and she did her very best to take care of her wonderful, incited, inspired young man. Why, she got up early and made him some of that sweet bread. She got some of that milk and got it cold and got it in a good old jar for him and put it in a poke and sent him on his way. And sure enough, he just happened to follow the same trail his brother was and he got about tired about the same point. And sure enough, he ended up on the very same log that Tom had sat on. He sat down there and he's about to get him something to eat when that old man come up out of the woods, just like his brother told him. Why, well, he had that long blue beard. He, he looked more like a troll, maybe, and he looked kind of mean, and, and Tom didn't know. Got to be magic in a guy like that. And he was afraid for him that he might do something nasty and terrible to him. And, and sure enough, that old man come up and, and looked right at Will and said, Oh, Will, I... I'm an old man, and I hadn't had nothing to eat now for a couple of days, and, and getting pretty weak, and I and I was wondering if you just didn't have nothing you might share with me. I, I don't want the whole of what you got, just enough to get me by. Well, Tom thought about it, knew what his brother had said, and thought it was pretty good wisdom, and, and so that's what he told him. He says, oh, I'd, I'd like to help you, I would, but but you see, my mama just got me enough for me, and I, I'm going to go do what the witch could do, and I, I got to be able to, I got to be able to do what she is. I need my strength up. Need, you understand, don't you? And sure enough, that old man went on his way. And Will, he said, I didn't know if he's going to get out of here or not. I was afraid what he'd do to me. And so sure enough, Will just ate up that sweet bread, drank that sweet milk, and he went on his way. It was 
going pretty good as he got there and got down to where the witch lived and and there wasn't much of a place and and there wasn't very much of a line a lot of the fellas already been through and got hurt in that area and sure enough he just watched one after the other go in and come out go in and come out and while they was doing that finally got to be Tom, the Will's turn. And as he got there, he's a starting to knock on that door and it opened. He stepped inside. It slammed right behind him. And sure enough, like his brother had told him, there was this little sliver of light that come down on the ugliest old ward, on the ugliest old nose, on the ugliest old woman he'd ever seen. And she was pointing her crooked little old ugly finger right up at Will saying, all you got to do is do what I do. She got up on that chair, turned three flips, hit that hackle, and bounced off. Why, Will, he is ready for this. Why, he got up on that chair. He is going to show her up. He jumped up. He turned four flips, hit that hackle, and stuck. Why, that witch just put her feet on either side of him, rocked him back and forth, pulled him up, and throwed him out the door. King's men wrapped him up and sent him on home. Why, well, that was the worst of worst things that could happen. That night, his mama was just looking at Tom, all beat up like he was. Now looking at Will, beat up like he was, looking at little old Tom, uh, Jack and saying, Oh, what are we going to do, Jack? Can't get the fields done right now. Can't work out with the animals. Uh, we just you're not going to be able to do nothing around here at all with these boys all laid up like they are. Oh, I'm afraid we're in my bit of trouble, I do. Well, Jack got to thinking, and, and he got to worrying, and he says, Oh, Mama, I know I'm just a little old boy, and I, I can't do what my brothers did. I'm not got wheels and, and, and thinks like Will does, and I, I, I'm not strong like Tom, but uh, I just feel sorry for that little old girl out there, and I, I feel like I ought to go try at least, Mama. And, and Jack's Mama just looked at him and said, Oh, Jack, you, you don't know what you're asking for. Oh, Jack, if you go out there and you get hurt, who's going to help me around here? Well, I can't take care of this place all by myself. I, I need you to be able to help me out, and, and I just don't want you to go. Why, well, Jack couldn't sleep hardly that whole night. He knew what he's going to have to do in the morning. He loved his mama, but, but he didn't want to, to hang back like she was a saying, and and so he just got up early in the morning, and even though his mama was a good woman, she didn't get up and fix him nothing. Why, well, he scrounged around, and he found some old stale crackers, and he put it in his poke, and got him the old mason jar, and as he was making his way down to the queen, uh, the witch's house, why, well, he was able to fill it up and got some old creek water in it. Following the same trail that his brother's was, he, he ended up on that same old log. And he sat down, and he was about to eat, and sure enough, that same old man come up out of the woods. Jack looked at him, and, and he didn't see nothing that looked like an old troll or nothing, just just little old man, little old man that wouldn't look like he was doing good. And that old man sure enough said, Oh, I'm glad to see you, Jack, I am. I, I ran into your brothers recently. I don't know if they told you or not. Good boys your brothers are. That's what they are, good boys. And uh, but I just noticed you got a poke there, and I and I was just wondering if if you don't got nothing you might share with me. I I'm a I'm an old man, had had nothing to eat now for three days, and and I'm getting a bit hungry, and and I just hoping you might have something to share. Why Jack thought about it, he didn't have much nothing to share, and he said, well, I, I tell you what, um, I just got some old crackers and some creek water and. You could probably got better on your own, really, sir, but uh, I tell you what, you you can have what I have. And, and when he said that, that old man sat down right next to him. He reached his hand right in Jack's poke, and, and when he pulled it out, it wasn't no stale crackers. It was this great big strawberry shortcake. It had all kinds of sprinkles and things all over it. That old man just ate the whole thing right up. And he held out the sack for Jack to put his hand in it. And when Jack put his hand in it and pulled it out, it was a great big old chocolate cake, frosting all over it, every layer in between. Jack ate the whole thing up, and it was the best thing he'd ever eaten in his whole life. And and then the old man said, Oh, after I've, I've uh, eaten a little bit, I'm thirsty. You, you said you got something to drink? 
Jack just hand him that old creek water, and, and whenever he got it, he twisted off the lid, and he started to drink it, and he looked like he had the best thing he'd had in his entire life. It, it, was, it looked like he was enjoying it. And when he handed it to Jack, and, and Jack got to drinking it, Jack thought it was the sweetest juice he'd ever tasted. Never had something so good and so sweet in his whole life. And that little old man got up and said, Oh, now, Jack, since, uh, since you shared with me, I'd, I'd like to share with you. He reached in his pocket, and he pulled out this little piece of wood. And he handed it to Jack, and he says, Now, Jack, you take that piece of wood, and, and, and uh, it'll take you wherever you need to go. And Jack said, What you mean? He says, Oh, that ain't just a little old piece of wood, Jack. That's a boat. And when you clap your hands three times and say, go, boat, go, that little old piece of wood is going to take you wherever you need to go. But, but I want you to remember, there's plenty of room. And if there's anybody that wants you to go with you, you just take them along. Jack thought about it and said, okay. So the old man went on his way and Jack, that, that little piece of wood, he sat it down on the ground. He clapped his hand three times, <laughs> said, go, boat, go. And all of a sudden, that little piece of wood started folding this way and that way, getting bigger and longer and, and wider. And pretty soon, there was this beautiful boat right there in the middle of the woods. Jack didn't know what he was supposed to do, but he went ahead and got on the boat. And when he did, he said, go, boat, go. And when he did, it floated right up off the ground. Well, it started weaving in and out of the trees and going up and going down. And, and as he was going around, he heard the strangest sound. Oh, I sound something like this. <laughs> Why, wow, Jack looked over the side, and there was this little boy running through the woods. He'd run up to a big old boulder and smack his head on it, and it just turned to dust. Why, wow, one time he was doing it, and he said, Hey! What are you doing up there? Jack hollered off, said, I'm going to go do what the witch can do. Want to go with? He said, I'd love to. So that boat come out down there, and Jack went out and introduced himself. He says, hi, my name's Jack. Nice to meet you. Who are you? And that fella said, oh, nice to meet you, Jack. My name's Hardy, Hardy Hardhead. He said, nice to meet you, Hardy. Come on, let's go. Why, they hadn't gone very far until they heard the strangest sound. Why, why it, it sounded uh, something like this. It, it sounded like... <laughs> and they looked down, and sure enough, there was this fella. He was a, a running up, and he was a sneaking up, and he'd, he'd grab hold of uh, a little old deer, and he'd poke it in his mouth and go, <laughs> spit out the bones. It was the grossest thing they'd ever seen. Why, he was a wiping off his mouth whenever he said, hey, what are you guys doing up there? And he hollered off and says, oh, we're going to go do the, what the witch can do. You want to go with us? He said, sure, I'd love to. Why, that boat come out of the air. Jack introduced himself, so did Hardy. They said, who is you? And he said, oh, my name's Ernie, Ernie Eatwell. He said, nice to meet you, Ernie. Come on, go with us. And that boat got up in the air, and it hadn't gone very far until they heard the strangest sound. Why, it sounded something like this. <laughs> they looked down, and sure enough, there's this little boy walking up to little old ponds in the forest, poking his head in, sucking the whole thing dry. And when he was wiping off his mouth a little bit, he said, Hey, what are you boys doing up there? They said, We're going to go do what the witch can do. You want to go with us? He said, Sure. That boat come down. They all started introducing themselves. Jack said, Hi, my name is Jack. Hardy introduced himself. And Ernie introduced himself. And he says, Hi, my name's Darren. Darren Drinkwell. He said, Come on, Darren. Let's go. Why? They got on there, the boat started flying again. They hadn't got very far until they heard the strangest sound. Why, it sounded something like this. They all looked over and they couldn't see nothing at all. They heard that sound again. And when they looked down there, no leaves and things were a fluttering around where they was hearing that sound come from. And then all of a sudden they noticed this boy come out of seeming like nowhere. 
He was just running so fast they couldn't see him. And then he stopped. He was wiping the sweat off his brow. And he said, hey, what are you boys doing up there? They said, we're going to go do what the witch can do. You want to go with us? He said, oh, I'd love to do that. Why, that boat come right out of there. They all started uh, introducing themselves all the way right down to that new fella. And when they got down to him, he says, hi, my name's Ronnie, Ronnie Runwell. They said, nice to meet you, Ronnie. Come on, let's go. Well, that boat got up in the air again, and they hadn't gone very far until they heard the strangest sound. Why, it sounded something like this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, it's, oh, it's hurting my ears. It's terrible. Oh, it's, a, it's a monster. A bear. I don't know. It's just something so loud. It's awful. It's just terrible. And, you know, it's awful. You know, somebody help me. Help me. Help me. And right next to that gal, there was another girl. She was on there looking around, looking around, looking around. Says, oh, I see what it is. I see what it is. Look, look right over there. You, you see how, how the, the land just drops off a little way, comes up on the other side, a little bit of a ridge. See those little, little, I, I, I think it's a little bit of a saddle right between those two mountaintops there. And, and right down there, there's a, a rhododendron. And, and right by that rhododendron, there's a big old bloom. And by that bloom, the, you you can see that's what it is. I, I know that's it right there. That's what's buzzing. It, it's that bee right over there. It's making all that terrible noise. It's, I know that's what's hurting your ears. And, and there was another girl. She came out and, and she pulled out this long barreled gun. She aimed it right across the way. She squeezed off a shot and knocked that bee right out of the air. And when it did, that first one said, Oh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, what are you boys doing up there? Why, they all said, We're going to go do what the witch can do. You want to go with us? And she said, Oh, I'd love to do that. And that boat come right out of there. They all started introducing themselves, come right all the way down to that first girl. She says, oh, it's nice to meet you boys. It really is. My name's Henrietta, Henrietta Herewell. And the next girl said, oh, it's nice to meet you. It really is. My name's Susan, Susan Sewell. And the last one said, hi, nice to meet you too. My name is Cheryl, Cheryl Shootwell. Why, I know you heard those kinds of names before. They all got on that boat, and they hadn't gone very far until... Why, well, I know you hadn't heard this story. You probably tried to finish that for me. No, they were at the witch's house. That boat come right down out of the air. Jack got up there, and there was no line. He got up to that door. He was about to knock on it whenever it opened all by itself. <laughs> Whenever Jack stepped in, he started to say, Well, uh, can I bring some friends? And the voice come out, You bring whoever you like. And all of them gathered up. They went right on into that cabin. <laughs> that door slammed right behind them. And sure enough, just like his brother said, on a little sliver of light came right down on the ugliest old ward, on the ugliest old nose, on the ugliest old woman he'd ever seen, pointing to her ugly old finger right at Jack, saying, all you got to do is do what I do. Why, she stood up on top of that chair, jumped up, turned three flips, hit that hackle, and bounced off. Jack started to go over, and he felt a tug on his arm. Why, it was Hardy. Hardy said, let me take care of this. Why, he got up there. He jumped up, turned three flips, came down, landed on that hackle, and turned it to dust. Why, that witch just looked at Jack and said, oh, after I've exercised a little bit, it makes me hungry. You haven't done what I can do yet. They stepped outside, and there's two little old goats tied up, one on a stake over to the left and one on a stake over to the right. And and she said, first one to get through eaten. She didn't say ready, set, go, or nothing. She just jumped down on that goat. She started a eating and a slobbering and, and pulling that whole thing in. It was the grossest thing they'd seen in their whole lives. But no fear. Why? We had Ernie. Ernie said, Jack, I'll take care of this. He jumped over there and grabbed up that old goat. <laughs> spit those bones right out, went over to that witch and says, oh, ma'am, ma'am, uh, I, I hate to be a bother down there, uh, but um, I I'm still a little bit hungry. You don't got nothing else to eat, do you? Why, that witch just come up a wiping her mouth off and saying, well, after I've already eaten a little bit, it makes me thirsty, and, 
and you hadn't done what I can do yet until we get you a drink. Why, she jumped herself right into part of a creek. There was two of them running on either side of her cabin. She says, you start to drink that one, and I'll start to drink this one, and the first one to drink it dry. So she went over to hers, and Jack started over his, felt a little tug on his arm, and it was Darren. You guessed it. He jumped right in there, poked his head in. He just put, sucked in all frogs and fish and moss and tadpoles and, and all kinds of stuff, just sucked the whole thing dry. He went over to help the witch out, and she just said, oh. Why, I can't, after I've eaten and drunk a little bit, why, there's only one thing left to do to take a little stroll down to the beach. Why, they didn't know what she was talking about. They lived up in the mountains. She went into her hen house and she come out with an egg. She broke it in half and gave one half of the shell to Jack and she took the other. She looked at him and she says, first one down to the beach and back with salt water from the ocean. Why, that's the one who can do what I can do. And she took off running. Jack tried to, but she was right out of his sight before he could get very far. And that's when he felt a tug on his arm. It was Ronnie. Ronnie grabbed that old half and he went <laughs> right on by that witch, <laughs> right down through the foothills, <laughs> right across the plains, <laughs> right on down to where the beach was, miles and hundreds of miles away. Why, he got there and he looked around and he could tell that the witch hadn't even got to the plains yet. And he said, I got myself a lot of time here. It's a beautiful day. He started putting his foot in the water. He got some in the eggshell. And he was getting himself a little bit of a tan. And he looked up and noticed that she was getting down closer, moving pretty good for a little old thing like that. But he said, you know what? I'm just going to take care of this. I'm going to run right by her. I'm going to buzz her, and I'm going to show her just what I can do. And so Ronnie took off. And right when he got right next to the witch, she held out her hand, and it was a handkerchief. And that handkerchief went right over his face. And when it did, he went straight to sleep. His eyes shut. His body stopped right in mid-stride, and he went straight to the ground. And when he hit the ground, he started sleeping and snoring. And when he started sleeping in the storm, back behind Jack, he could hear, oh, oh, what is it? Oh, it's terrible. Oh, oh it's the monster's back. is going to come get us or some bear. Maybe that bee's around. I don't know if you got it. Oh, there's something terrible out there. Something hurting my ears, hurting my ears. Oh, Henrietta was having a terrible time about it. And, and so Susan says, oh, I'll take care of you, sister. I will. Uh, let me see. What is it? It's, oh, it, it's, it's, there's the witch. I can see her. She's, well, oh, she's almost nearly there. Why? Well, Ronnie should be back by now. And, oh, where is it? Oh, I see him. He's, he's right there. He's, he's taking a nap. You sh we should not have sent a boy. We can't trust them sleeping on the job like that. We should have sent a girl. That's what we should have done. But no, 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 something's not right. There's something on his face. Some kind of a, a cloth or something. Maybe a, a handkerchief. Oh, oh no, I, the, witch is, the witch has done something. Oh, oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We, we can't do nothing. Oh, we're in a terrible fix. And that's whenever Cheryl said, I can take care of this. She pulled out her long barreled gun. She aimed it right at Ronnie's head. She squeezed off a shot. <laughs> And it moved that handkerchief right off his face. And when it moved off his face, the first thing he saw was the witch's feet going right by. The second thing he saw was his eggshell that had turned over and there was no ocean water in it. So he picked it up and started making his way back. Why, the witch, she was making her way back as well. And it was going to be a terrible close call. And, and you know, you ever seen one of them football games whenever the guy don't think there's anybody around and so they slow up just a little bit to celebrate? Why, that's the very thing that this witch did. Why, she just started a slowing down. She started to get in her celebration mood of being able to do what nobody else could do and be able to keep that princess in her dungeon and her grafts forever. 
And that's whenever Ronnie's hand came right in front of hers. Ronnie was out of breath, but he'd done it. Why, that witch just looked right down at that hand that eked out in front of hers, and she crumpled up that eggshell and tossed it on the ground. She stomped it into dust and went right up to Jack and looked him in the face. She poked out her little finger and she said, I may be a witch, but I'm a witch of my word. Why, I told you you could have the old king's daughter back if you could do what I did and you can have her, but I, it's not the last you've heard of me. And she went on her way, and Jack and his buddies went looking around for her, stomping around in her old cabin. They found a loose old board, and they got it pulled up, and there was a little bit of a cellar down there, and that poor little old girl all bound up down in the darkest dungeon you'd ever seen. Why, they pulled her out, and she was so thankful. She'd never been so frightened in her entire life. And she just didn't know if she was ever going to get a breath of fresh air again. She was afraid that she'd just have to be living in that miserable state her entire life. And here were all of these wonderful people a grabbing her and a hugging her and a celebrating with her. And they all got out onto the boat, and Jack said... Go, boat, go. And it lifted right up off the ground, and it took them exactly where they needed to go, right to the king's house. Why, it lowered right down there, and the king couldn't believe his eyes. Why, he just was so excited, ran down, throwed his arms around his daughter, and just embraced her, and kissed her, and cried on her, and just let her know how much he loved her, and how he's afraid that she'd never get back again, and and, and was so excited, and, and looked around and saw Jack, and said, Oh, Jack, I, I'm going to keep my word and promise to you. You'll get to be the next king you will. You can have half of my kingdom. Why, you are the bravest and strongest and smartest person there ever lived to do something like that, to, to do what the witch could do. And that's whenever Jack started saying, well, to be honest, uh, well, I didn't really do anything. Why, well, didn't really do anything. It was all my friends, really. And Jack started to tell him the king about all of the people he'd met along the way in his journey and how everybody had a part to play and, and how really he just kind of led them along. And they was the ones that was doing all the amazing things. And that's why he got his daughter back. Why, the king just looked at him and says, Oh, Jack, you've done a whole lot more than you think you have. And I'm just going to... I'm just going to embrace everybody here and welcome everybody and, and I'm going to give something to everybody to tell them how thankful I am so that we can rejoice together. And we're going to have a great feast at my house and you all are invited and your family so you go and get them and come back here and we will celebrate till the dawn comes. Now I tell you that story because it holds some truths that are dear to me. And one of the things I want you to remember is that it should hold some truths that are dear to you. Now, whether you realize it or not, the church throughout history has been envisioned like a boat. Usually because uh, on a boat, it takes all kinds of people to get one of those old ones on its way. You got all kinds of tasks and chores and things, and it takes a whole crew of people, and everyone have their own task, and everyone working hard together to make it work right. And that's how the church is as well. But in the church, uh, we don't have our own talents. We, we have what God gives to us, uh, but we also have a very special talent by his spirit who gives us uh, a gift in his way. Each one of us uh, have a part to play. And whenever we use our gifts together as the church, there is no evil that will stand in our way. And as we go along working together, we will do the very thing that God desires, and that's to redeem people who have been uh, locked in darkness and bring them into his wonderful light. 
And so I share that story with you to remind you of who we are as God's people and the task that is before us. I hope you've enjoyed the story, and I'm looking forward to sharing another one with you.